Hello everyone, today we are doing a Death Must Die tier list on the gods and their blessings aka spells for our hero Everyone the Knight. Let's start with D e tier, Nin the Earthbender. There's the legend cast spell Quick. Other than that, her arsenal is pretty unremarkable and does not synergize well with our tanky AoE caster build. Next, we have C tier Mog. Has legend passive spell Vampirism which is great for manual healing and melee, which is great for more de status damage but Knight benefits more from casting AoE spells than getting in close range combat for attacking and healing which will put us at risk for taking more damage when dealing damage and trying to melee heal. Mod also has decent passive such as the Execution that offers more XP gain when defeated enemies are cursed but that's about it and her arsenal is quite lackluster. Mod is more suitable for ranged heroes like Marys and Lauren who benefit more from long range attacking and being DPS glass cannons. In D tier, Winter has 4 legend spells. Summoning is Frost Dragon, passives are War Freeze, Chill to the Bone, and Horde Force Frost. She has serious AoE cast and power spells that offer decent AoE crop control like Stacks of Chill and Frozen, which are great for Knight and synergize well with his two strongest gods. In A tier, we have Chrome, who has three legend passive spells, focused more on damage but zero power spell slots. So that means if you have four empty power slots, you must pick the other two gods with a total of four power spells to maximize your DPS output. He has knockback dash and strike spells, charge and chain of war, which has a decent summon blood swords which has a great knockback and a dash area passives and overall great AoE DPS potential. In the same tier as Chrome, Summer has 3 legend spells, cast name Inferno which is a AoE ring high damage half a minute cooldown attack, a summon called Fire Dragon, a pet that deals AoE damage and a passive called Jihenna, an XP passive gain for every status on enemies. She also has a power spell combust that knockbacks and explode enemies which will cause a chain reaction. Now in S tier, Lei Gong has two legend spells, Shrike Hawk, Hurricane. It is the ultimate crop control spell that drags enemies into itself and deals tons of damage while keeping the knight safe for any close range attacks for 12 seconds, which by critical time for the knight to use other crop control or dash spells to create more distance and safety away from the long range attackers. Tornadoes have a similar but smaller effect to Hurricane, while Ball Lightning Dash is another great spell to offer safety and distance away from dangerous foes while dealing damage and transversing great distances at lightning speed. Even without summoning spells, Legong offers Tons of passives that up movement speed, reduce cooldowns, and up strikes damage. So Ligong is very compatible for our tanky build. At A tier, we have Lady Justice, who has three legend spells, cast called Day of Judgment that judges all enemies, two passives called Inner, Inner Peace, which is a super upgrade to mods Vampirism as it always heals you and gives you experience when you are at max HP. And second passive, Pandemonium, which will upgrade all your spells rarities. Although she doesn't have an innate crop control, she synergizes well with our build but sorely lacks a summon spell which could have bumped her up to S tier. Now last but not least at S tier, we have Time. Time has three legend passive spells, Haste of Time, which is a super AoE damage spell, Temporal Lord that revives you, and Gem High that offers move and attack speed plus cooldown reduction. Warp Attack gives extra experience. Vortex is a dash 
decent dash spell with some crop control. Time field offers great slowdown and DPS AOE on the enemies. Force complements well with our insane 17,000 square pool area and deals damage and suck up XP shots from far away and maximizes our level ups. Alteration Ritual is a great wild card and able to boost our DPS. Time has 3 passives to extend the duration of our castles, strikes and summons. So time is super versatile and one of the core gods for our tanky build. Now let's look at our replay of our current Everon Knight tanky caster build for our late game 80 plus Scouts Act 1. Here we max our Scouts at Star Crooks Act 1 outer circle for every enemy stat boost except for Makeway, Lama Bless and Zinger Bless which will up their movement speed prediction accuracy of our movements and down our movement speed while we are attacking. We are maximizing our survivability with 57% damage reduction, 1 revival, pool area of 17.5 thousand squares, our god blessings rarities, and we equip ourselves with 8 benches, 4 rerolls and 12 alterations. Here is a quick look at our 36 out of 36 constellarium for Everon. We are going for full defense and utility stats and bosses because in high level scouts we need to have high defense and high offense because glass cannons will get shut down really early before they even reach the halfway mark much less the final boss Baron or Din. Now let's look at the gameplay and the end game stats. Alright, so we are focusing on time mod and Gong. So we have our first skill Black Serpent which uh, deals the most damage, total damage and total DPS. Second skill is Fear. So the top two skills are from Mot. Then the third skill is Hurricane from Legong, which is an awesome crowd control that protects us. Fourth and fifth we have Force and Time Fuel from Time. Six we have Lightning Bolts and seven we have the Taste of Time. Yeah, so this is how we defeat 87 Skulls with Everon. Please enjoy the rest of the video. Also, comment below if you agree with our tier list and our build. Uh, tell us why in the comments.
Alright, thanks for watching. Comment below if you have any questions and will you try this um, Death Must Die? Please like and sub for the Elgos and I'll see you all next time. Adios.